Hey everybody, welcome back. It is 27 minutes past the hour. Well, a lot of parents struggle with this. How to say no to your child, especially when they make that cute, sad face or they want something. Well, we've got our moms on the go here with a solution. We've got Lisa, <laughs> Molly, and Allie back in action this morning. And uh, big, big deal. <laughs> it is. My mom said that she didn't really say no to me much, but I beg to differ. I know my grandma <laughs> has stories. So let's start off with you, Lisa. How do you keep the positive as aspect flowing? Because no is sort of associated with negativity. Right. I think a lot of times they say, I mean, we read a few articles, did a little bit of research on it, and they always say to try to promote the yes in things instead of saying, you know, your child asks to go to the park. Instead of always just saying, no, we're not going to go to the park. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Maybe we can go tomorrow. Or like, yes, when you finish your homework, we can do something like that. Okay, instead of just always being like, nope, no, we're not going to do that. But you know kids, though, they're, they're not going to forget. Even though right. parents would like, you know, right. yeah, we'll do it tomorrow. But then, you know, they're going to say, hey, remember, you said we can go to the park today five or six times. So, Molly, how right. do you deal with that? Well, I think um, trying to understand a child's mind is similar is very similar to adults. So if somebody tells you, no, don't, stop, all the time, you're eventually not going to like it. So instead of doing or telling your child not to do something, tell them what you want them to do. So instead of saying, don't be late, say, you need to make sure you stop what you're doing and put your toys away so that we can leave for band practice in 10 minutes. And that way, you know, instead of them trying to understand or interpret what you're meaning, you're telling them exactly what you want them to do, which is much easier for them to understand. Okay, what's the level of authority that needs to be established when saying no to a child, Allie? Um, well, you're in charge, so I'm a big no person, but I'm really trying because this actually makes total sense because I can understand when I say no to my son, it breaks his heart, you know? So finding the positive and trying to stop saying no and, and think probably, of happy things. Yeah, you're having a hard time, you were telling me, saying no. Yeah. How have you been well, doing that? Well, it's not like I catch myself doing it more often than not, and most of the time I think it's because we get very busy and we get caught up in what we're doing. And so, you know, instead of saying don't, you know, don't push back in your chair because you're going to fall and hit your head, say thank you for keeping all four legs of your chair on the floor. And that way, you know, a child isn't always hearing you with the negative. Mm -hmm. You're in saying thank you in advance. You're showing them how they need to treat people as well. So, you know, I, I'm definitely trying to install that a little bit more because I do see my kids, as soon as I tell them no, want to push back. Gotcha. Well, I, I, you know, it's easy as, I don't have a child, but I feel like I raised my nieces, and so I did struggle with saying no, and I kind of have an idea of what type of parent I do want to become when that time right. does happen, but I also feel like there's some level of patience. If I'm a working mom, I'm busy, and I've got things to do. I've got to make sure that all the kids are dressed. They've got to prepare, right. I've got to prepare meals, you know, right. make sure the house is taken care of. What level of patience does a parent need to exude in order to get the message across, but without losing, you know, having a short temper? I honestly think it's really tough for me, especially because I am really busy, and so a lot of times I'll catch myself, I mean, I was reading articles about this, and while I'm reading it, I'm like, Colt, stop, like, no, and I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, that's what yes. I'm reading not to do. Yeah. So I think it does take, you know, you just have to find time and try to, like, take a breather, step back, you know, like, understand that he doesn't understand, you know, it's just something he wants to do, it's innocent fun, like, he doesn't realize, you know, that I'm, like, losing my patience, or, so just, like, take a minute, take a deep breath, and just, like, under, like, just explain to him, we can do it another time, we can make time tomorrow. Is it, is it healthy, Molly, for kids to just cry it out? Definitely. <laughs> I think that's where parents give in, is yeah. when the kid mm -hmm. doesn't stop crying. Well, and it, I mean, it is very difficult because it's much easier to say yes. And, you know, I was definitely guilty of that with my first one. You know, I didn't, I had a hard time hearing her cry. So if I could make her stop, then, you know, that's what I did. Now, with my second one, it's definitely easier because you realize that crying isn't detrimental to them, you know, and it's helping them work through their own emotion. Um, but again, it's not something that you're going to do overnight. It's incorporating little changes every single day mm -hmm. and being conscious of, you know, being impatient or not taking the time to explain something to them fully when they're fully capable of comprehending what you're saying. Gotcha. All right, ladies, we could continue this conversation for the entire 30 <laughs> minutes that we have left on the show, but unfortunately, we are all out of time. And ladies, thank you so much for uh, being a part of our weekly segment, Moms on the Go.